Just before you start watching this video, if you're someone who likes to consume information at a faster pace, I like the pace that I'm speaking at right now, then go ahead and put this video in the 1.5x or the 2x speed and it'll allow you to watch this video much, much faster and consume all of it. Or just sit back, enjoy, bring out your notepad and pen and enjoy it at 1x speed. Peace. All right, guys, plain and simple. I've made upwards of $10 million by the age of 22 years old. You know, I can live wherever I want. I'm living in my dream apartment. I bought my dream cars. I got a Lamborghini recently. Uh, I take my parents on trips. I take my friends on trips. I, you know, traveled all over the world. I don't like to be a cocky bastard, okay? So I'm not gonna get into the luxuries too much of my lifestyle. Bottom line is, if you know me, you've seen me, you probably already know that I've had a lot of success at a young age. Um, and I feel like, you know, I don't share enough about my success, as in, I don't share enough about what actually got me here. Like I give you guys specifics like tutorials, like e-commerce guides, how to make money online, step-by-step, step, that kind of stuff. But the truth is everyone has access to all this information, as did I. So the real stuff is behind the scenes that nobody actually sees. So I thought that this would be the most fitting way to do a video like this. It's not at my usual setup. It's not professional. There's going to be like very minimal cuts. I'm literally just in my kitchen right now and I got this whiteboard up. So I'm gonna walk you through the things that actually led me to success and not just with making money, okay? I know the title of this video is gonna be something like, I made 10 million by age 23 or 22. Uh, here's how you can do it too, or something like that because you guys will click on it a lot more. But the real truth about this video is that I wanna show you each aspect of my life and the lessons that I learned and what got me here and how I operate that actually fuels all of this. Because of course, it's not just the information, it's just a step-by-step -step guide bullshit. Because if it was, then we'd all be rich because we all have access to the same stuff online. And like I said, I got started on Google. Uh, I searched how to make money online. I followed steps, I followed people. So if that was the case, we would all be rich. And that's not the case. Um, the case is, there's a lot of key things that I learned along, along the way. You could call them secrets but I'm just gonna break them down for you right now and I don't really think they're secrets. Got a few things pulled up on my phone so I don't miss anything, um, but basically there's a bunch of different factors uh, that have allowed me to have success in my life. Um, the first one, I wanna call it like mindset. By the way, excuse me for my extremely poor writing, you're gonna have to get used to it. Now we've got uh, friends and family. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably already thinking like, you know, what the hell? I want to make money. How does my friends and family have anything to do with it? Well, I'll tell you right now, your friends and your family has a huge role to play in your success. So let me just see if I can zoom this shit in a little bit more because I doubt y'all can see what's actually going on. Hopefully you can see that. Mindset, friends, family, okay. Um, power and when I say power I mean like everything to do with like fame and I don't mean fame as in like Brad Pitt like movie star like gets all the girls like Leo DiCaprio like no 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 I'm talking about fame as in like people know who you are and that's it this could be that you've ran an ad and everyone knows your face could be you have a little bit of an Instagram presence who knows that's what I mean by fame and status like just people know of you okay um, the next thing that we have is women Okay, now don't get scared off. You know, this isn't a dating advice video, uh, but there's gonna be some obviously key points that I've learned about women that have allowed me to have success in my life in all aspects and of course contributing to money as well, which is probably why most of you guys are here. But like I said, all this ties in and you'll see, just, just, just hang on, make sure you stay in this video and let me explain myself. I'm just writing out all the categories first, okay? So we got women, we got networking. Right, and this is not some cliche bullshit. I'm gonna give you guys like the real hard truth about networking, so make sure you stick around for that part. And then lastly, like how to spend your money, okay? How to, oops, spend dollars. I told you guys my writing just gets worse and worse as I go. But anyways, these are the most important aspects. Take a good hard look at them. And I thought about this too. Like I know this video is completely raw and it's just off the top of my head, but I wrote a few key points. And this is what I've realized, like time and time again, uh, my success in my life in, in all aspects comes down to these different things, okay? So now that you guys know uh, what they are, we need to get started with the first one. And I don't know what I did with my eraser, so one second. Yeah, I still don't know, maybe this will work. Boom, okay, easy. No whiteboard eraser, but we got a dish rag. Perfect. So when it comes to mindset, we have a few key points. The first one is goal setting. 
And I'm not just talking about the bullshit, like smart goals they tell you to set in high school or university or whatever, because you guys have probably heard that crap a lot. When it comes to goal setting, I'm just talking about what the hell do you actually want out of your life, out of your business, the reason why you want to make money, the reason why you want to be successful. You need to seriously start here and think about this. The best way to think about this is what is your big why, okay? If you can understand this, you have exponentially increased your chances of succeeding at whatever it is that you want in life. Now, this could be anything, okay? This could be retiring your parents. This could be buying a house. This could be buying 50 watches in a private jet. I don't care. It, it, materialistic or not, it does not matter, but it has to be something, and it has to drive you to want to wake up every single day and move your life towards that big why. And now a lot of people, like, they might be thinking, like, well, you know, my why right now is to just, like, have freedom and support myself. Sure, okay, that is fine and that is great, but you also need to be aware of what happens when you do achieve your why, right? And this is something that nobody talks about because everyone talks about the big why, but if you're a hard worker and you listen to the other stuff I'm gonna say in this video, chances are you'll probably achieve that why, and I've achieved that why like multiple times at this point. And so when you get here, what do you need to do? I'm asking you. You got your answer? Okay, you need to find a new why. Simple, right? And this process can go on forever. A man or, you know, for better use of words, I guess, a male or female, anyone, anyone's purpose on this planet could be a million different things. And you might figure that out along the way. We don't know. But as long as you pick something, you work towards it, you achieve it, then you're gonna have a more clearer idea of what your next thing is. So for example, when I started, my goal was to get out of college. I made enough money or I got out of college, okay? That was my big why. And then, you know, sure, maybe I went through a few weeks of feeling complacent, feeling comfortable, you know, feeling in this weird state of like, oh, I don't know what to do with my life now. Well, then my next why was taking care of my parents. And then my next why was, you know, moving into my dream place and then, and so on and so forth. And I'm always changing this, right? And, and maybe you have a why so big right off the bat, like feed a million starving children and that's fine too, but just understand that's going to take a lot longer to get to, um, and make sure you have micro goals or micro whys or micro like things in the middle that can give you a little dopamine boost and, and show you that, you know, you're on the right path and you're eventually going to achieve the big thing that you want, even if it's 10 years down the line. Okay. So, that's a little bit about goal setting. And to be honest, that's all you need to know right now about like the big goals, okay? <clears throat> and to be honest, that's, that's all you need to know right now about like goal setting, okay? And, and you'll, this will start to make a bit more sense as I get further and further into it. Uh, but next, what we have here is we have visualization. And before you leave and you're like, oh, I don't even know if I spelled that right. Before you leave and you're like, oh, this is some like woo-woo, like manifesty shit. First of all, it is. But second of all, it's not woo-woo. It actually works. And I've done this time and time again. I've put so many people onto this. Um, so I'm not even gonna call this uh, visualization slash manifestation. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you that most people who have preached this, this crap to you have preached you some garbage that just does not work. I'm not talking, when I say this stuff, I'm not talking about, you know, you think that you're going to be a millionaire tomorrow and you wake up and there's a million bucks in your room. Or you, you believe, you visualize yourself winning the slots in Vegas. No, no, no. That's, that's crap. I am talking about you visualizing and manifesting your big why coming true. So remember what I was talking about earlier in goal setting. This is how you actually achieve the goals. This is how you build that mindset. So... With visualization and manifestation, what you want to do is you want to imagine yourself having achieved the thing that you truly want. So for example, let's say I want to be sitting on a beach in Hawaii on a new property that I purchased, okay? And this might be like my year's goal or two years goal, roughly. So 
I'm going to visualize basically every single day. Like I'm going to live in this state where I already feel like I've accomplished this and I've done this. And sure, in the beginning, it might feel like you're kind of tricking yourself. Um, and, and, and honestly, that's not what's going to get you there. What's going to get you there is when you genuinely, genuinely to your core believe that you are that person. Because that's going to cause you to make an identity shift. And making an identity shift is the most important thing that you can do. Because when you shift your identity, you shift your thoughts. When you shift your thoughts, you shift your actions. When you shift your actions, you shift your habits. And when you shift your habits, well, you start to shift your lifestyle and just everything. And then next thing you know, you look back and you're like, holy shit, I actually became that person that I wanted to be. And this has happened to me so many times. I'm telling you, every single thing I visualized when I was 18, buying a Lamborghini, moving into my dream apartment, buying my dream watch. Like, again, I'm I'm not going to go on because I sound like a cocky bastard. But my point being, every single thing that I've dreamt of, and when I say dreamt of, I mean visualized, has came true. Simple. Okay. So if you follow this, maybe it will work for you too. Manifestation, okay? This, again, is, is kind of just the same shit as visualization, if I'm being honest. But there's a little bit more that goes into it. Um, I like to write things out, right? It gives another touch point. So in my journal, every year, beginning of the year, I write exactly how my next year is going to start in detail. And guess what? Last year's journal entry, I just finished reading it the other day because it's the start of the new year. Every single thing down to the last crumb happened. And I was looking around like, oh shit. You know, I wrote something like, by the end of 2023, I will have traveled across the world. I would have had X and Y experiences. I would have met X. I would now have Y in my life. And I would have made X amount of dollars and I would have done this and I would have done that. And when I looked back on it, I was like, wow, you know, that actually happened word for word, exactly how I wrote it. So that's pretty much the key to this stuff. And that ties into the first thing that I was talking about, which is the goal setting. So to be honest, that's pretty much all I have for you guys for mindset. Okay. But now the next part here is really important. And if you're thinking about it from the beginning, when I started, you guys would probably be thinking, what the hell does this have to do with being successful, making money, all of that, right? And maybe some of you guys are starting to think, okay, maybe this ties into uh, my habits, my actions, the things that are going to get me to where I want to be. And for those of you who are thinking that, you are 90% correct, okay? So firstly, we have how they treat you. So how these people in your life are treating you, right? Then we have how you should be treating them. Then we have what to say to them. And then we have a little bit of a last point here, setting boundaries, which I think is super important and it's kind of not really spoken about. But first of all, this one is so important. So how do these people in your life, the closest people in your life treat you? And when it comes to, you know, the vast majority of people, I feel like this is their issue, right? This right here is holding them back from everything because if they want to start a business or they want to, you know, pursue their dream of becoming an actor or all these things, probably their best friends and family are going to shit on them. They're going to shit on their ideas. They're going to shit on their hopes. They're going to shit on their dreams. And, and it might not necessarily be that these people um, have it out for you or they don't love you. It's just that they themselves aren't thinking the way that you are. They can't conceptualize your thoughts. They're, they're not in your brain. They don't understand you. And they believe by them shitting on you that you are going to make the right decisions. Well, I can tell you right now that is entirely false. That is entirely false. Um, and so this is where, if you have a problem with these people in your life, like I just said, saying the things that I just said, this is where you need to step in and you need to set some boundaries. Okay. So you need to tell these people, look, you know, this is what I said, actually, exactly. I said, I respect your opinions. I respect your point of view. 
I respect your advice. Um, I, you know, I have it in the back of my head and I'm always going to uh, think about it, but I got to go my own way. I got to go my own path, uh, my own person, and you have to respect that, right? And if these people don't respect that, then maybe you got to cut them out forever or maybe you got to cut them out temporarily, okay? And so, you know, for example, a lot of people's parents won't respect that, even if they set boundaries. Luckily, my parents did to an extent. They'd still give me some shit, but they still respected my decisions and when I set boundaries with them, okay? But if these people do not respect your boundaries at all and they're not treating you the way that you want to be treated, then seriously, you might have to consider cutting them out for a period of time. Because obviously, if they're, parents, you're, if they're your parents, you're not going to cut them out forever, right? Now, how you should treat them, right? So this is kind of the other side of the coin. And so basically what you want to do is you want to show people your track record, you know, show people that you are the person who gets the shit done that you say you're going to do. Because if you don't, if you're always coming up to people and telling them that you're going to be an actor, you're going to make $10 million, you're going to be a professional soccer player or whatever, and it just never happens. Well, then they have full right to treat you like shit. Because to be honest with you, you probably are a piece of shit. And that, I'm sorry, that's just the reality, right? So when it comes to how you should treat them, you should treat them with respect as well. And if you say something, you fucking show up and you do it. So these two go hand in hand with each other, right? And then what to say? We, we kind of talked about that a little bit before when it comes to setting boundaries. But all of these four things are the most important pieces when it comes to friends and family. You get this right, I guarantee you get your relationships right and you start moving in the right direction, you start having success in every other aspect, especially with making money, taking risks, all that good stuff. All right, next up, we got power or fame, status, money, whatever you want to call it, okay? Not money, sorry, power, fame, or status. So basically, this kind of comes when you start achieving anything in life. Uh, and I would say, even if it's just the smallest things, okay, so you probably have a degree of power and fame and status in your life right now. You just don't recognize it or you don't know because when you think of this, like I said earlier, you think of Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. But I'm talking about power and fame within your own life. There is people in your network, whether it be a little brother that looks up to you and that sees you as like, you know, some kind of figure that, that they would want to be like, right? And so as you get more and more successful in whatever aspect, maybe you go to the gym, you start getting a six pack and then big biceps, everyone is going to see that, right? They're going to see that status, that status symbol of you having a ripped body or you having a million dollars in your bank account or whatever it is. So now as you're starting to stack these wins in your life, you have to deal with being in this position. And I don't care how small it is, but you're going to have to deal with it, right? And so some key things here is dealing with hate, right? And hate's a strong word, but it is entirely the case uh, when you start to be in these positions. And chances are, like I said, even if you have the smallest wins, you're already in this position. You're also going to have to deal with jealousy. And you're also going to have to do with, deal with support, right? So you're going to have supporters as well. So how, how, do, you, how do you deal with those people? Because some people operate better, you know, for example, like Jake Paul operates better with a shit ton of haters because that literally fuels him. It's like the, the most cringy and cheesy quote ever. So your haters are your motivators. But for many people, that is literally what gets them going every single morning, right? And then you have... Uh, jealousy. So like I said, maybe you're at the gym and you're getting shredded and then all these fat people are jealous of you. They're jealous of the body you've built. So they are going to undermine your achievements. They're going to say things like, oh yeah, he's, he's ripped, but he's a douchebag. How is, how is making him ripped? How is, how is him being ripped mean that he's a douchebag? And I feel like society, like that, that is just something across the board with society. Like whenever anybody has any kind of success, immediately people are jealous and, and envy that success because they don't have it themselves, right? So, so dealing with this one can be quite tricky, especially 
when it comes from family and friends. And then lastly, like support, right? So you're going to have supporters as well. You're going to have people who are genuinely happy for you, who are going to want to celebrate in your achievements, in your successes, in your wins, big or small. Now, how do you not let this get to your head? And how do you not get comfortable and complacent when you have all this overwhelming support in your life? And that's going to start to stack up as well. So, you know, what I've realized is there's so many different approaches that you can take. And like I said, you know, the Jake Pauls of the world are going to solely focus on their haters and use this to level up. So that, that could be your route. Or, you know, you're going to use the jealousy, again, same kind of thing, to level yourself up and to uh, just continually prove these people wrong. Or in a sense, like, you know, someone said an analogy, I can't remember where, but they were saying... It's like when an eagle's flying in the sky or whatever, and there's some crows and, and shit attacking it, like, and they're, everyone's trying to get a piece of it, what, what does it do? It keeps flying higher and higher. And then at a certain point, these other birds that are they're coming after it, they're jealous, that are hating on it, they can't sustain the altitude that the eagle has flown to, so they fall off. And, and I'm sure you guys have probably seen this time and time again with you know people on the rise. I know I've seen this. In my life, when I first started, let's say, a YouTube channel and first started posting content. And I'm not saying that I don't get hate and jealousy to this day. Of course I do. But in the beginning, there was a lot of hate and jealousy from my close friends, from my network, from people who were, you know, at my high school or whatever it may be, right? And then it reached a certain point where I flew too high, let's say 100K subs. And guess what happened? All these annoying little crows in my life who were jealous and who were hating on me and whatever, they fell to the ground because they couldn't sustain the altitude that your boy was, was flying at, right? So that's one way of dealing with it. And I mean, now I'm dealing with sort of a lot of this stuff online as well. And, you know, kind of my way of dealing with it is just block it out and keep flying higher. And then eventually you do see all of these crows just, just fucking falling to the floor one after another, right? Now the support you got to keep the support, in my opinion, in your life, right? There's some people who, maybe like Jake Paul, that probably don't want a lot of support and love in their life. I'm sure maybe with their closest people, but they, they'd rather have more haters accumulating, and that's, that's what drives them. I think for me, it's a nice balance, right? Having the people that support me kind of boost me up, but then also the people that hate on me bring me back down, and I can find that happy medium where I can continue to grow and be successful. But all this stuff matters a lot, actually, more than you'd think, regardless of what aspect of, regardless of what level you're currently at in life or, or where you are, because I guarantee you, no matter where you are, you have some people who are jealous of you, you have some people who hate on you, uh, and you also probably have some people who support you, even if it's only one. So that applies to you, and it's only gonna apply more and more as you continue flying higher and higher, okay? Now, the next category we have here, just erase this, is women, okay? Now, women is a very interesting category because this, I feel like, single-handedly derails the most males from achieving what they really want in life. And, you know, part of me doesn't blame them because at the end of the day, it's biology, right? Humans were essentially put on this earth to survive, not thrive, right? So we weren't meant to build YouTube channels to a million subscribers. We weren't meant to, um, I don't know, explore space or some shit, right? At the end of the day, we were meant, bi biologically speaking, to reproduce, right? And how does that happen? As a man, that happens when you meet a woman. So every single day, for most guys, we are all driven biologically by finding someone of the opposite sex and thus having sex, okay? So that's the first thing that you need to understand, but now there's obviously a lot more that goes into it in modern society. So I'm gonna write out a few things here. We have chasing women, we have dating women, 
And I would say these are, these are two very different things, and I'll explain that in a second. Now we have attracting women. Attracting. We have how to treat a woman. We have the digital world. And now this one is a really important aspect that I want to talk about because I just feel like all of these things have been affected by the internet and I've seen it firsthand in so many different ways. Um, and now I guess we have single versus relationship. And this is, this is a very, this is a very interesting topic that, you know, every single person that I know goes, goes back and forth with. And it's kind of one of those things. It's like, it almost seems like the grass is always greener on the other side. At least every guy that I talk to kind of has the same universal experience there. So I want to dig into that one. And then I get, I guess the last one is like lifestyle decisions, right? And what's interesting is if you're a young guy right now in modern society, it seems like, I guess I'll just start here, but it seems like you're presented with two ways on how you should orchestrate your lifestyle when it comes to being with a woman, right? You should either live a playboy lifestyle. Oh my God, this is horrible writing, but playboy lifestyle. Or, you know, we'll call it like the monk mode, hustle culture, red pill, NPC lifestyle. And then I know it's the opposite of NPC, like the red pill shit, but I also call it red pill NPC because they're their own NPCs in a way because they just all copy everything that fucking Andrew Tate says and regurgitate the same information online. So that's why I call it red pill NPC. But that's this other, uh, this other category of how you should be living your lifestyle, right? And the issue with this is there's such polar opposites that you just have no idea what the fuck is right for you, right? And to be honest, I would say neither of them are right for you. Neither of them are going to get you to where you want to be in life. And, and maybe you want to have a playboy era for a bit. Maybe you want to not see girls for a bit and see how much progress you can make. What I say to you with that, with both options, is I say good luck. I mean, I've been there on both sides of the coin. All my friends have. Everyone successful that I've talked to have tried both of these or maybe they've stuck to one longer than the other. Who knows? But bottom line they've all came to the same realizations that I have about this crap and neither of these options truly get, get you what you want. And I'll explain why when we get through some of these other things. So let's start up here. Okay. Chasing women. This is probably right here, single-handedly the biggest killer of men's aspirations and dreams in modern society. And I'll tell you why that is. Because right now, how do you chase women? And when I say chase women, I don't mean date women. I mean you're constantly looking for new girls to validate you and to have sex with them and to go meet them and, and all this crap, right? So realistically, you have a couple of options here. You have, and this ties into the digital world as well. So you have social media, and you have uh, going out, okay? Now, do you already see a problem with these two things? If you're watching a self-improvement video or a video about how to be successful or make money or whatever, you've probably seen these two things and the general consensus around them, okay? And the general consensus around them is they're bullshit and they're not gonna get you anywhere. Going out drinking every weekend, every Friday, every Saturday, why do most people do it? Again, right here. Number one, they want to find a woman, but of course they don't actually want to have kids. That's just the biological drive, but then they want to chase women. And this is a bunch of different things on why they want to chase women. Of course, there's a the biological drive to have sex with them, but it's also for the status and the validation the, to prove to themselves that they can, you know, attract a woman in their life and all this crap. Right. Um, so yeah, you, you know, I don't need to explain much more. Going out is, is crap and, and going out for those reasons is even worse. And social media, social media is killing everybody. 
it's literally killing everybody. We're spending years on years of our life when you add up how many screen hours we have every single day to look at girls on Instagram and DM them. Now, do you think either of these things are getting you what you really want? If you go back to your big why and your goals and your reasons for living and all this stuff we talked about early, are these two things assisting? I can tell you right now they're not. So let's forget about this because we know this is not going to get us where we want to be. Now we have dating women, okay? And the reason why dating women is different than chasing women is because when you're dating, you have something to work towards. You have something to build and for good reason. Let's say your big why is that, uh, you know, you want to retire your parents. Well, maybe the woman that you're dating, you're going on dates to find this woman is going to support you and aid you and help you on this process of life. And that's the way that it should be. I don't think it should be this red pill NPC bullshit, six wives, or don't talk to girls for months at a time. And I also don't think it should be this playboy chasing women bullshit either, right? It has to be somewhere in between. And that's why you should honestly go on dates. You should get your experience with women. You don't have to go crazy here. Maybe you set like a cadence, like you allow yourself like one date a month, um, two dates a month even. Hell, if you're a really horny guy, fucking four dates a month, I don't know. But figure out something that works for you and don't waste your time on these, right? So now how, now you might be wondering like, okay, that, that sounds like a lot easier said than done. How are we going to actually attract these women to date these women if we shouldn't be thirsting on Instagram all day or we shouldn't be going out to the clubs hunting, all right? Well, that's a good question. <clears throat> the easiest way that it's done is in your existing environments. So are you part of a club? Are you part of a sports team? Are you in a community? Are you at school? Um, you know, places where you find people with similar interests. Do you work a job and you see these familiar faces and you start to mingle with these people and get to know them better? This is the most organic, best possible way that you can come across dating women. And I, and I think that, that, is, that is the best, right? Now, if you happen to be living a unique lifestyle where you're not in school, you're not working a job, um, you're not in any communities, you're not in any clubs. Well, first I would say probably join some communities or clubs or find some passion projects or hobbies or areas of interest and you'll meet people along the way who have similar values and share a similar passion for what it is that you're trying to do as well. <clears throat> but then secondly, maybe you do turn to social media going out, but just a little bit, just enough to get you the people that you want in your life and you want to meet because you can find good people on social media. You can find good people going out if it's for the right reasons and the right reasons only and not for the wrong reasons. And you're not abusing these privileges. Now, if you are in a unique lifestyle or you're not in school, you're not working as am I, right? <clears throat> and you do want to turn to these things a little bit from time to time. You have to know how to use them and how to actually have success using them. And again, this is not like, I don't want to turn this video into like a dating coach bullshit because that's not what I am. So I'll just drop a few key things that I think would work very well. When it comes to social media success, success in the online world, look, this shit does matter. Like Instagram nowadays is like <clears throat> literally your fucking mating card or some bullshit. I don't know. Because every time you follow a girl or a girl follows you or you meet a girl on the street or even a girl in your school or whatever, they'll be like, what's your Instagram? Because they want to see that you're not weird before you link up with them. Simple. They're concerned about their safety. They don't want to be with a weirdo, a creep, whatever. <coughs> Excuse me, I need to get some water. Okay, sorry. So Instagram nowadays is like, Literally your fucking mating card or some shit, okay? So girls will follow you on Instagram, as Reed knows, he's smirking behind the camera, and they will literally suss through all your photos, all your stories, to ensure that you're not a creeper. That is the biggest thing. You're not creepy, you're not weird, um, you're not you know, putting them at risk of their own safety. <coughs> so with that in mind, what is the best ways that we can improve our Instagram so that we're not seen that way and people might actually want to 
give us a chance to go on a date with them, right? So <clears throat> there's a few different ways we can do this. Number one is pre-selection. Pre-selection. Now what that basically means is you're showing that you're somebody who's been selected by other peer groups or other people. Uh, and you know, you're, you're validated as not weird. So you're hanging around other people who are maybe cool as well. Their, their profiles aren't weird. And that's in your Instagram posts. That's in your stories. They're going to take note of that, right? That's probably the most important thing. Once you've covered that and they understand you're not a complete weirdo, the next thing that you probably want to do is you probably want to have some sort of good headshots or like solid pictures of what you look like. Because if you're just hiding yourself and you have hoodies on all the time and no one knows what your facial features look like or you know, potentially how you look in different events or different circumstances, then why the fuck would they want to go out with you? Just think about that. The first step, honestly, of going out with someone is, is knowing what they look like. And if you're not remotely attracted to them, you won't want to take them on a date. The same with the girl with the guy. Like if she, she doesn't know what you look like, how the fuck is she going to know if she wants to go on a date with you? So seriously, have a couple photos on your mating card of what you look like, right? Simple. Now, you can start to get more and more deep with this. Like, you know, you can go into things like uh, showcasing your hobbies, your passions, your interests, uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, but honestly, if you just have a few photos and you can communicate that you're not weird, this is what I look like. <clears throat> And maybe some stuff to do with fun. This is what I do for fun. This is me having a good time. They are naturally going to want to be a part of that fun and be a part of your life. And it's just, it's just so simple, but everyone fucking fucks us up. Everyone does it wrong. <clears throat> okay. So now that we've covered that, there's also um, how to treat a girl. And again, this is no dating masterclass. So we're just going to kind of whip through this one. But Look, you, you, however you want to be treated, you should probably treat a girl the same way. If you want to be treated with respect, with trust, with loyalty, um, you know, this is not a thing where I'm talking about Andrew Tate, like biologically, men and female are all different. Look, at the end of the day, we're all human and we all appreciate when somebody else is nice, kind, loyal, trustworthy, all of these things. So just, just, Treat the person with respect. It's as simple as that. I'm not going to get into like, you got to be a gentleman. You got to pull out the chair. You got to bring flowers on the first date. You got to, you know, shake the dad's hand and look him in the eye a certain way. Like, like all this stuff. Like, yeah, it's great. It's good to be a gentleman, but like, fuck all that bullshit for now and just learn how to be a respectful, kind, nice human being. And that's going to get you a lot farther than any other tactics or anything else that anyone's going to try to tell you or sell you or any dating coach or anything like that. Okay. Now, I guess I could start erasing all this stuff, but <clears throat> we also have being single versus being in a relationship. And this is probably the most important thing on this. So I'm assuming a lot of people watching this are young males or young females. I don't know. <clears throat> but my audience generally doesn't get above like 35 40. So, I mean, shout out to you guys. If you are a little older and you wanted to come by and learn something from a young person's perspective. Uh, but for most of you guys, you're much younger and a very common question that even I had myself a lot is like, is it better to be in a relationship or is it better to be single during these periods of your life for your progress, for your advancement, for your growth, right? And Look, there is no right answer. That's just the truth of the matter. If you're single, <clears throat> but you can control it, you're not going out all the time, you are going out on proper dates, and you're working hard to build your dream life, there's no issues. Like, you'll succeed. If you're in a relationship and you have an amazing person by your side who's supporting you, who's helping in your goals, achieve whatever it is, build a business, make a million bucks, retire your parents, your big why, also great, right? If you have a toxic relationship, goes without saying, cut that shit off. If you are single and you have a toxic relationship with going out, it's a pull, shot a fuck, 
then you also got to stop that. Okay, simple. Next up, we have networking. And I feel like I'm probably going to get a drop off as soon as I write the word networking in my audience retention graph on YouTube. Because I know I would probably click off a video if some guy started preaching like networking bullshit to me. Because <coughs> the amount of times I've heard this, like not only in videos, but also at university lectures and from my parents and from every older person ever uh, about the benefits and the power of networking, then I'd be pretty pissed off if some young guy started blabbing about it to me too on the camera. But stick around because I'm going to give you the no bullshit kind of version of networking, right? So how to actually meet people, how to meet. We've got cutting out people from your network. And again, the digital world is coming back. because It is ever so prevalent in this topic yet again. And then we have time. And when I say time, I mean like spending time. How much time do we want to spend networking, right? <clears throat> so how to meet people. Now, it goes without saying that when I'm talking about networking, I'm talking about making connections that are going to help progress you in your life. And for me, a lot of the times, it's business. It's making more money, right? But for you, it probably also is business because you're watching a video on my channel, but it could also be getting fit or it could be learning something new, right? Playing an instrument. I, I don't care. Whatever it is. So how do you meet these people? Well, there's a number of different ways that you can do it. Um, let's start with the digital world because you guys are in the digital world right now watching this YouTube video and you could very easily leave it and connect with me but when I'm done the video. So that's one way of meeting people right there. Watching YouTube videos, finding people on Instagram that share similar interests, maybe they're putting out content uh, relating to the interests, maybe they're joining groups, Facebook groups, Discord groups, communities, right? And you want to uh, get involved in as many of those as possible. That's a great way to meet people. <clears throat> Another way to meet people would be organically through your communities in person, your school, your workplace. Uh, maybe you work remote, but maybe you can, you know, hop on a Discord call or Google Meet call with these people. And the crazy thing about networking is like, you only need to meet a couple people. <coughs> and then guess what happens is somebody introduces you to somebody else and so on and so forth. And before you know it, after meeting, like making like one or two connections, you have 20, 20 great people, right? So it's, it really is a compound effect when it comes to networking. And the digital world, if used correctly, social media can help us a lot with getting to the people that are going to most benefit our life. <clears throat> now, chances are before we started going down this path of self-development and business and making money and all this stuff, we have people who just existed in our life right? Maybe it's that uh, toxic uncle uh, who's, you know, always steering you away from your goals and, and telling your parents that you'll never be, uh, you'll never be successful. Or you'll never be the uh, kid they want you to be or whatever. Or maybe it's some friends that you used to get fucked up with on Friday, Saturday nights. Um, and these people, they just want to drag you down. They don't respect your ambitions. They don't respect your hustle. They don't respect where you're going. They have no dreams for themselves. So it goes without saying that these people need to be cut out no matter how hard it is, right? And <clears throat> I'm saying they only need to be cut out if they are deterring from your life. Like they are literally taking away from you becoming the person that you want to be and going to the places you want to go. If they themselves have no ambition, have no drive, do not have a care in the world to improve their life in any aspect. You can keep them in your life, honestly. Like, I'm not going to tell you to cut them out. If they've been your longtime friends, whatever. But you should be very conscious of how much time you are spending with them. Because you know that quote of like, you know, you hang out with five millionaires, you'll become the sixth very soon. It applies for everything. You hang out with five gamblers. Well, what, what the fuck do you think you're going to do? You're going to go to the casino and then very soon you'll very quickly 
become the sixth gambler. <clears throat> and this literally applies for any scenario. So I know now me, me and most of my boys that are always at the crib, we're always talking about money. We're always talking about leveling up, about business, about finance, about you know, how to attract the right woman into our lives, how to get the things we really want, how to think critically and on a deeper level, uh, things like that. So <clears throat> when it comes to all those old people in, in your life, if they are toxic and they are harming you, they are hurting you, cut them immediately and never look back. So maybe that's an ex-girlfriend that cheated on you, cut them immediately and never look back, right? Or maybe that's uh, a friend who fucked you over really bad, cut them out of your life and never look back. If it's somebody who <clears throat> loves you, but they just have nothing going for themselves, they just want to lay on the couch all day, look, don't cut them out forever. Be the good friend, if anything, try to help them. If they really can't be saved, then see them once in a while, but be very cognizant of how much time you're spending with them. That's the truth, okay? <clears throat> and I guess that's pretty much it. Like, I don't want to bore you with like so much networking crap. So absorb what I just said, rewind the past like 20 seconds, if you have to, but that's like everything that's like really moved the needle for me uh, when it comes to networking and understanding about when people need to leave my life, when they can stay in my life, and obviously how to find some people and add them to my life and enjoy spending more time with them because we have similar passions and we can help each other out along the way. <clears throat> now, this next topic is super underrated, as in nobody really talks about this on YouTube videos and content. And I know it's different. Like we have like mindset and health and money and, and all these topics like this. And then all of a sudden this is a topic, how to spend money. You might be thinking like that doesn't really make sense. because It's not like a broad general term. It's a lot more specific, but it's hyper important. Okay. So this, or I guess these are the pillars of things that we need to talk about when it comes to how you should be spending your money. And this goes for like any stage. I don't care if you're making, you know, $500 a month right now, if you're making $10 an hour, if you're making $100,000 a month, if you're making, fuck, I don't know, even a million dollars a month might be watching my videos, that'd be cool. If so, connect with me, please. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it, regardless of where you're at, these are what I've kind of realized are the most important categories to think about when it comes to spending your money, right? So health, <clears throat> when it comes to health, <coughs> or I guess I'll say business slash education as well. When it comes to health, unlimited spending. Okay. Now, don't, don't be an idiot and go and buy like biohacking chambers for $10,000, please. Uh, but know that your health is going to be directly correlated with all of your success in life. How you feel, your mood, your physique, um, simple tasks that you have to do in the day, walking up and down stairs, uh, just everything, everything. Health is like the foundation. And the most successful people know this and they invest so much money back into health. In the beginning, you don't need a lot of money. But whatever you can afford, if you can improve your health, keep spending here. This is an amazing category to spend in, probably the best. The next we have is business, education, and housing. I'm not going to say unlimited in, on housing. In fact, I think you should live far below your means for as long as possible because that allows you to spend more money on your health, which will in turn make you more money, make you more successful, and then eventually you can upgrade your cribs slowly, right? All right, business and education. So obviously this is putting money back into your business and education is investing into things that might help you learn something new, that'll help you grow your business, that'll help you make you more money, that'll help you become fitter and healthier, all these sorts of things. Education is literally like one of the most important things you can spend your money on. So that's why I said this category should be high. You should always be thinking about if you have extra money, how you can reinvest into yourself in the form of your business, in the form of education as well. <clears throat> Investments, I'm actually gonna put low, like it's, it's a low priority. And I know a lot of people watching this video 
are probably very interested in finance. You probably read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. A million people have told you to buy up assets. At this stage in our life as young people, it's most important that we reinvest into ourselves. We increase our cash flows. We increase our health because that's going to allow us to exponentially make more money for the rest of our lives. Why are we so worried about investing right now? And look, if you have extra money, it is great. And when I say extra money, I mean money that can't really go into here because you kind of, you know, you're maxing it out or you have a solid business plan in place, doesn't require any more spending and your health is pretty dialed and pretty optimized and, you know, your housing's in a solid place and all this stuff. Then kind of on the lower, on the lower end priority, you can start to pump some money into investments. You can start to build those assets and you guys probably know the compound effect and how powerful it is. I think Albert Einstein says it's like the eighth wonder of the world or some bullshit like that. But look, it's, it's not that important. <clears throat> it pales in comparison to some of the other stuff we've just spoken on. And I hope you can see why. Um, so I wouldn't be freaking out about trying to catch the next crypto rocket to $10 million or whatever. I would just, if you have extra money, start buying up the S&P 500, do the Warren Buffett strategy. You can't really beat the market. Um, you can't really time the market. That's just the truth of it, unless you're getting some insider information or something, but that's a story for another day. So yeah, low priority on investments. Now the last category here is, is your, your guilt-free spending. So I just kind of put everything like, um, you know, going out and buying drinks, um, going out on dates with women, right? Going to the cinema, going to, <laughs> it's the cinema, bro. Should I put the antenna? Anyways, um, entertainment, you know what I'm talking about. It's like anything in your life that's not really essential, you don't really need to be spending money on. This is sort of your guilt-free spending. And I would say regardless of what income level you're at, you should allocate somewhere between five to 20% of your monthly income. And look, if, you're, if your monthly income is extremely low, then like I'm talking about like, let's say like your monthly income is like 500 bucks, okay? In this case, you could probably go without all this crap and, and you probably already know that because you just, you're just barely hanging in there and making it by. So why on earth would you cut into this to do this? Like, why wouldn't you just increase this and then spend this on this, right? But for the majority of people probably watching this video, you're probably getting by, like you're living somewhere, your health is somewhat okay, like your business is, business or, you know, the job that you work in or maybe you go to school is kind of taken care of and you have, you can allocate, look, somewhere between 5 to 20%. If you're making lower, probably 5 you're making higher probably 20 if you're making extremely high numbers then probably back down to five because why on earth would you need to be spending like 100k a month on the, the fucking cinema if you're making a million dollars a month so that's kind of how i see it and if you can just follow follow by these rules when it comes to spending your money you're going to be overall a lot more successful but anyways that was the end of this video this was the last topic so i hope you guys enjoyed kind of me speed running through all the topics that I feel are the most important and the key takeaways and the things that I've learned in each of these topics that when used all together has allowed me to build my dream life and become successful, not only with making money with building a business, but in many other aspects of my life as well, as mentioned. And yeah, I'd really appreciate if you guys dropped a thumbs up if you enjoyed this style of content. My camera died, so we got Reed behind the phones. So shout out to him for uh, picking up where we left off. And yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you in a couple days. Peace.